First Chronicles. First and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles. Chapter four. Some of you will be very familiar with this portion of scripture. It was it was made well known by a man who did a lot of teaching on the prayer of Jabez. And uh, man, they had the prayer of Jabez for everything. It became uh, very well known. We've been looking at things from the scriptures just to encourage us. And uh, tonight we're looking at the fact that God answers prayer. We can sing that and we can believe it too. Uh, First Chronicles 4, I'm going to just read verses 9 and 10. First Chronicles 4, verse, verse 9. I don't know what page it is because I have a different Bible than you. But verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. As far as I could find, this is the only place he's mentioned in the Bible, other than a couple of chapters earlier, there's a town of Jabez. The name means sorrow. Can you imagine having a child and saying, let's call this one sorrow? Now, my parents were going to call me quits. They said, let's call it, let's call it quits when they saw me. But uh, they, this poor little guy was born, and the Bible doesn't tell us what was going on, but... Something was going on to where there was sorrow in their, their family. I bear him with sorrow. And we don't know what. But, you know, that's, that's life, isn't it? There's a lot of sorrow in life. But this was a man who, as he grew, knew the Lord. And, uh, you know, what a blessing it is to see someone who just, you know, very simply by faith calls upon the Lord and, and God answers his prayer. Uh, Jesus had said, in John 17, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Uh, this is life eternal, to know the Lord, you know, to know God. Jabez knew the Lord, and he called on the Lord. <coughs> if you really know the Lord, you'll, you'll call on him. You know that that's, that's your hope. Uh, Jeremiah wrote, call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. That's the amazing thing. When you call on the Lord, he can answer us answer in ways that you can't even think of. It's no good telling God what to do. He knows better than you do. You just tell him what your need is and let him work it out. Uh, it's like one time I asked for a raise and uh, you know I asked for $30 a month. This has been a long time ago. And uh, they gave me $30 a week. And I said, now did you, you understand? I was asking for $30 a month. He said, yeah, we, we just we wanted to give you more. <laughs> and I said, don't, don't limit God by how you ask. I just call on the Lord, and uh, the Lord wants to hear and answer our prayers. We were going to try and sing a, a psalm that I, I chickened out. Uh, it's actually Psalm 18, verse 3. Let me just read it to you. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. It's a psalm of thanksgiving by David. Now, you, if you know anything about David, he was a warrior. He, he didn't just plan battles. He fought in battles. When he prayed, I mean, it was, it was life and limb. I'll call upon the Lord, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the beauty of knowing the Lord, is we can call upon him any time, any place, and know that he hears and answers. Now, four things, uh, maybe one big thing and three little things with, with uh, 1 Chronicles 4, verse 10, in what Jabez asks. He first asked, I, I guess it's kind of a general thing, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed. Lord, bless me. You, you've, we've all prayed that. Lord, bless me. Lord, help me. And uh, it, it's interesting in life that sometimes what seems to be a blessing can actually be a problem. You know, we, we don't always know what to ask for. Uh, you know, sometimes if we have good health, we forget about the Lord. If we get a lot of money, oh, man, we're out of there. You know, uh, Sometimes it can almost... You know, having, having things sometimes can, uh, can cause us problems. The 
Solomon wrote, I think it was Solomon, he said, Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? He said, Lord, if you give me too much, I might forget you. Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Now, the, the Bible's not excusing stealing. <laughs> but he's just saying, Lord, don't give me too much or too little. Just give me enough. Uh, just bless me. Now, sometimes things that seem like curses in your life can actually be blessings. Um, you know, Brad talks about losing his eyesight, how, you know, what a blessing it's been in, in, in his life in some ways. Uh, you know, poverty, conflict. There's an expression, a blessing in disguise. You ever heard that? Oh, that was a blessing in disguise. You know, I thought that was a problem. Man, that turned out good. Um, but the key is we should want what God wants. You know, Lord, you know me. You know what you want to do with me. Lord, bless me. Bless me the way you want to bless me. And then be thankful uh, for whatever comes your way. Uh, humility is, is a basic part of having a relationship with God. And I, I think from what we can see in the, just these two verses, that that was Jabez. Here was a man who was humble before his God. In the, in the Psalms, he said, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in the holy place? You know, he's saying, who's gonna be able to communicate with God? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. You know, a lot of people lift up their soul to vanity, don't they? Oh, Lord, I, I need this. Yeah, I need that. Lord, I really need that red Ferrari. Yeah, I need a, a red one. <laughs> and it's just all vanity, you know, it's, it's pride. Humility is, is the basis of uh, Jabez coming to the Lord. And then uh, I think you can say he, he asked for maybe, I think we can say it this way, that he asked for three, three specific blessings. Uh, he said, oh, that thou hast blessed me indeed. Then he says, and enlarge my coast. Now, you, you may have never prayed that. Uh, it, it's kind of a different way to, to put something. But he's just saying, Lord, help me to keep growing. Give me more responsibility. Give me more maturity. Uh, now, that would apply physically. You know, maybe he needed more land to do what he believed God wanted him to do, or especially would, would apply spiritually. Lord, enlarge my coast. Help me to keep, to keep growing. Um, you know, Jesus said in, in Luke 16, He that is faithful in that which is least will be faithful in that which is, I can't remember the word, but much, I think it is. Uh, you know, we need to be faithful with the little things so that God can trust us with the big things. Nowadays, you know, these young people get out of university and they want to be the president of the corporation, you know. Uh, they don't think they've got to start at the bottom and work their way up. Well, that's, that's the way life works. You be faithful as a child, God will bless you as a parent. And you be, be faithful as a young person, God will bless you as you get older. Be faithful with $10, God might give you $1,000, you know. Uh, start, start with what you have. But then he's saying, Lord, give me more. Trust me uh, to, to do more for you. There's a, a phrase in Psalm 107, verse 23, where he talks about basically deep waters. He says, they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. What that verse is talking about is the difference between playing on shore and getting out into the deep waters. And Jabez is saying, Lord, I don't want to just play on the shore anymore. I want to get out into the deep. I want to trust you for more. And you know, we've been Sunday nights looking at the, the subject of growing spiritually. It's the same thing. As we grow spiritually, it means we're going to be doing more. We're going to be trusting the Lord. I was thinking about it today. For each one of us, there's, there's specific characteristics that we have. Some of you are noisy. Some of you are quiet. You know, we have different qualities. And for a quiet person to grow, they're going to have to go past their fear. You know, where you normally say nothing, you're going to have to say something. And for a person who's noisy, sometimes they're going to have to, when they normally keep talking, they're going to have to be quiet and listen. <laughs> that might be a step of faith to not say something. <laughs> yeah, and it's different for each one of us, but we have to go past fear to faith. Trusting the Lord. Lord, enlarge my coast. 
Uh, the verse we used on Sunday nights was 2 Peter 3.18, where he said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we want to grow in grace. We want to grow in knowledge. Uh, move past that, that fear uh, to the faith. Uh, the verse I have with that is Isaiah 54. Uh, a, couple of fir- a couple of verses there. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Listen to this verse. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. And thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. God was saying, I'm going to bless you. You're going to have to expand your place of habitation. And uh, you know, that's what Jabez was, was asking for. He said, Lord, enlarge my coast. Give me more responsibility. And, and the, the key here is that we want to be growing. The key here is not, Lord, make me more important. It's, Lord, help me to grow so you can trust me with more. Help me to be trustworthy with what I have. He wasn't asking to be great. He was asking to grow. The second thing is that your hand might be with me. That's a great request. He's just praying for God's will. Lord, that your hand be with me. He didn't want to be living his life in opposition to the Lord. He didn't want the hand giving a cuff on the head. <laughs> he wanted his hand to be holding, you know, and going with him. Uh, and what that's talking about is God helping us and taking our part. You know, us going with the Lord. There's a verse in Ezra. Let's see. Ezra, Nehemiah, Ezra chapter 7. It's talking about Ezra and says, he was, of a ready, he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God had, had given. And the king granted him all his request according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Ezra had gone to the king, but it says that what he received was because God's hand was upon him. You know, when you go to your boss, when you go to your teacher, when you're, when you're facing things in life, the, the main thing is, what's God going to do? We should always do right. We don't have, don't fear man. We need to fear the Lord. We should do right and just look for the hand of God. You know, for Paul, sometimes that meant putting him in prison, having a prison ministry. <laughs> you know, for some people it meant dying. For some people it meant living. You know, it's one thing to die for the Lord. It's another thing to live for the Lord, isn't it? Uh, we look to God for aid. Uh, later on in Ezra 7:28, it says, And I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. And I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. And God was blessing him. God was helping him. God sometimes uh, moves us you know, as his hand is upon us. Uh, Ezekiel wrote in Ezekiel 1 and verse 3, The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Kibar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. God's word came to him, and God's hand was upon him. God was was speaking to him, is what it meant. And later on, it says in chapter 3, And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise. So the hand of the Lord was moving him. Not just speaking to him, but moving him. Uh, that your hand might be with me. And we need to hear from God. And we need to be moved by God. Then the, the, the third thing, this, and this is really an interesting one. That thou wouldst keep me from evil. Let me read it out of, out of the scriptures here. That's the second Kings there. And that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me me from evil. Now, part of what he's doing there is looking ahead. I found it interesting that, the, that that's part of the Lord's prayer, the model prayer. You know, when, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, he said, pray like this. And one of the things that he, he told them was part of the, the prayer was, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So it's very similar to what Jabez is, is praying here. It's not... 
This is not the idea, well, Lord, I'm going to do whatever I want, and you just you take care of me. Or, Lord, I'm going to do whatever I want, and I know you'll forgive me when, I'm, when it's all over. Now, that's not keep me from evil. Now, that's, that's just being rebellious. Uh, the Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. And what that means is it's better to do right than to be real sorry when you're done. <laughs> I've had people, you know, they, they wrong you, and then they, they say, oh, I'm sorry. And then if you're not real forgiving, they say, well, I said I was sorry. <laughs> oh, wow, that, that makes it all better. <laughs> I had a man I knew, he said he got hit by a car and it broke his leg. And the lady got out and said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He said, oh, that makes my leg feel a lot better. <laughs> you know, being sorry is, is not the key. Doing right is the key. Now, keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. Now, when you do wrong, confess it and forsake it. But better to not do wrong than to do wrong and, and look for God's forgiveness. Sin is a grief. You know, sin is going to be a grief to you. It's going to be a grief to others. Now, I can guarantee you the grief in your life, you know, if you have a, a regular constant grief, it's because of some sin, either yours or someone else's. And, and it's just sin is not a good thing to hang on to. Uh, Job said, I've heard of thee. He's talking to God. I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the reason we don't worry about sin is we're not looking at the holiness of God. We're looking at ourselves and thinking, oh, I'm good enough. We're looking around and saying, oh, I'm better than them. But that's not the, that's not the standard. Do you know what? I always remember it from 7-Eleven. I think it's Psalm 7-Eleven where it says, God is angry with the wicked every day. There's never a day when God says, oh, I won't worry about sin today. Sin is always a grief to God. And as Christians, um, we don't want sin to be a part of our life and be a grief to us. You know, we don't want it to, to be harassing us. Jabez had taken his eyes off himself and fixed them on the Lord. And he was a, a man of faith and a man of prayer. That, that's why he prayed this way. He knew he needed God to bless him. This wasn't the kind of guy who said, yeah, I'm a self-made man, you know, done it all myself. No, he said, God's blessed me. He knew he needed God to enlarge him, to expand his ministry, to help him grow. He knew he needed God to guide him and to keep him. And God did. Don't you love the end of that? And God granted him that which he requested. Don't you wish we could get a written answer from God? <laughs> Jabez didn't see this writing, by the way. But uh, God answered his prayer. And God answers your prayer. God does answer prayer. Now, I know we don't like it when he says no or when he says wait or when he says different, but God does answer prayer. You know, what an encouragement that is uh, to know. Here's a, a, an illustration for us of a person who just prayed a simple prayer and in, in sincerity before God, and God blessed him. In the Proverbs, he says, The path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. God says, as you'll follow him, it'll get better and better. And that's why Jabez is saying, Lord, don't let sin grieve me. Don't, make, don't let it get worse and worse. Let it get better and better. Uh, 1 John 4 and verse 17, let me, let me find that. The Bible says, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. You know, God is, is able to bless us and to make us like Jesus. And I, I, just, I found this encouraging. Uh, I know there's been people who've made probably too much of Jabez's prayer, but it is a good portion of Scripture, and it, it's easy to, uh, to think about and to remember. Oh, that thou hast blessed me indeed, and enlarge my coast, thine hand might be with me, and that, what was the last one? Keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God answered his prayer. Let me encourage you to be praying and look for, look for God to answer. God does answer prayer. Any comments or questions before we, we quit tonight?